what is the best foods to eat before and after a game, which I thought was quite topical for what we're talking about. Yeah. That feeling for performance and recovery that you mentioned. Yeah, definitely. So we, um, uh, yeah, particularly at the Crows, have actually had a really big focus on carbohydrates for this preseason. Um, we've just done a really big spiel on carbohydrates around game day as well. Uh, so the recommendations, it, it is hard in our team-based sports because uh, there's not a lot of research in AFL specifically, but there's lots in things like soccer. So we can kind of extrapolate that sort of data, but we generally recommend at least about seven to eight grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrates on your game day. So if we're thinking about someone, um, me is about 70 uh, kilos, that might be about 400 grams of carbs. And to put that in perspective, if you have like four slices of bread, that might give you about 50 grams of carbs. So calorie, I think Aiden Sanders, yeah. So calories yeah. per day, yeah. So I guess what's your stance with calories? Should footballers be counting calories? Um, it's quite a topical, topical one in terms of yeah, calories. What, where's their, what's the, from an education piece, I guess, when you're working with uh, younger developing as well as mature age athletes? Is it something that you discuss with them? Is it something they're tracking or is it more, um, I guess, like you talked about four you know, grams of uh, carbohydrates and protein? Yeah. Um, we don't have many athletes that do track things like macros or calories. Uh, it's certainly an option. Uh, a lot of the time it's about probably checking in with if it's realistic for them. So it can be quite tiresome, a lot of energy put into monitoring, things like that. So there are some athletes that thrive on that sort of data and work really well from it. And if anything, I find it quite educational just from a perspective. So it might be like, hey, let's jump on an app and just put it in for a week and actually just see where you're at. And then we can compare it to where, where I'd like you to be. So I tend not to talk as much in cal- calories as I do in, like you said, sort of those grams of carbs or grams of protein. Um, instead, we're working with suggestive portions. So it might be like two cups of um, passes their portion and working on that three times a day. For athletes listening in that um, do want to uh, reduce their um body fat or, or weight um, uh, for their football um, performance, um, but they're mindful of not restricting themselves from a health point of view, like you mentioned, what are some of your favourite strategies to put in place for someone with that goal in mind? From a nutrition standpoint, more often than not, I actually see athletes that are trying to lose weight being way too restrictive. So they're cutting a lot of food out and then that leads to post-game eating quite a lot of food in sort of that binge restrict model. So they're eating past comfortable fullness, making themselves feel sick, and that cycle continues. So it might actually be around, can we fuel and support training a little bit better, add some more things like your complex carbohydrates, like your rice, your potatoes, and pass it back in. So you're feeling good, you're feeling fueled, and not so deprived. Uh, there's an element of if we're taking out things and eliminating them, our brain will just want them more. So it's like... I know so many athletes that I can't have a block of chocolate in the cupboard. And I, I used to go like that, couldn't, I'd eat it all at once. But now I can go and have a square and it's, you know, and move on. So it's about trying to actually help athletes get to that place. Uh, what are some common ones that I guess you've had to educate um, developing footballers on, um, yeah, to, to ensure that they are getting that peak performance uh, and looking after their health? I think the number one is that sugar is the devil. <laughs> they A lot of them come in and, um, you know, maybe they've seen, seen the I Quit Sugar film or whatever it was in school um, and they're still really apprehensive about like a full sugar Gatorade at training or um, having lollies. So, you know, we educate a lot on the role that those foods actually play as a sports nutrition tool. Uh, so we see it as a way to improve performance and utilising it. Um, you know, in that sense, it's like it's fast fuel. It's going to be really easy to digest and for your body to access. So you can maintain your performance in training and games. So there is an element where that sugar is really important and it's what our body is going to break down and use quickly. So maybe they've experienced when they've overhydrated and they feel um, that that's affected them, whether they have to go to the toilet right away throughout the game or they just feel, um, yeah, tired um, from, from over drinking water. What, what sort of your tips on trying to find that balance? I actually had a really good um, example of this this season where we had quite a senior player who um, thought that maybe he was overhydrating and um, we call it like, sort of clear urine. So if it's clear, it's, you're probably going to the toilet too much. We do want that kind of like straw colour. 
um, and was waking up multiple times during the night. And then, you know, still, even though he was hydrated, he just felt like he was dehydrated because he was probably flushing outside of his electrolytes. So we went more on a bit of more of a structure with his game day plan um, and added in things like electrolyte tablets the day before and like your no sugar options to help with added um, sort of sodium and potassium to hold on to that water and then timing it around meals as well. That can sometimes help 